the first thing you want to do when planning a trip to see you know where this ISS is going to transit is you want to know where the best possible place is for you to be to see a transit can I go to my backyard you know uh, do I have to drive some distance away um, you know is it gonna be a month from now or is it gonna be a week from now <clears throat> okay so all those things um, this app here called ISS Transit Finder, uh, Sp Space Station Transit Finder, will show you. Let me, let me go over to. Uh, I'll show you. Let's see. Let me close this off, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, close map. Okay, return to settings. So, what you want to do is, you have the option to put a date range in here. Um, auto auto detect is going to like a GPS it's gonna use your current location as its base point for the search um, or you can select an area from a map and you, then you select your date range okay you know my current location for the next 30 days uh, you know within a 200 kilometer radius I click calculate and see what's going to come up uh, for transits in that with with those um, with that data that I put in uh, and so let's click calculate and what's going to come up here this one here looks really good okay it's gonna be the one that I'm going to do tonight so let's click show on map and let me just show you real clicky uh, let me just make sure this is still recording because sometimes it acts cuckoo so this blue path represents or this blue uh, arch represents the path if you're standing anywhere in this path that spreads along uh, these different cities and towns and states you will see this lunar event this lunar transit take place okay but what's even better is you can determine where you want to stand in this path in what town to give you um, a better view let me show you what I'm talking about see the little space station right here it's uh, represented by that little triangle okay if right there it's in the center if I go down here okay and I click to the outer side of this blue path see what's happened this little space station has moved to the top part of the moon okay so if I stand over here and I happen to want a shot where it, the space station is streaking through the edge of the moon, then that's where I want to be. If I want to stand in a place where the space station is going to go right through the middle of the moon, then I want to be in the middle of this path. And if you stand over here, well, it's going to be in the bottom of the path. So this helps you determine where you want to be and where you want to stand, uh, what, what town uh, or geographic location you want to be. Uh, to get the shot that you want so see how they all you know no matter what town you're in uh, in this blue path you're going to be able to see it travel different uh, sections of the moon and so that's really helpful but I want mine from up here in Santa Nella which is where I'm gonna go okay uh, and we're using in this example, cut it out. We're using in this example um, the split pea soup restaurant out here in Santa Anella, just as a place, you know, uh, to pick. That's not where I'm going to actually stand, probably, but I could. Okay. So now that you know where this thing is going to, where it's going to be visible for you to see it as it makes its lunar trans uh, transit you can from there go over to what's called you know you can use Google Earth and I do often use Google Earth and here is that location on Google Earth but let me show you something about Google Earth okay if I want to stand here uh, say I wanted to stand in this I looked at this and I said okay I want to stand in this dark part of this parking lot over here because that looks better so let's drag the little street view down to the parking lot ding ding sim city okay it's crap okay so what I do is I exit that and um, 
I use another app called the Photographer's Ephemeris, and, and let me show you what that looks like. And the reason I use both apps in connection with each other is because Google Earth, sometimes the pictures are not, not as good, or maybe older, or haven't been updated, I don't know. But if we go down here to the Split Pea Soup restaurant, Right, here's that parking lot I was talking about. So let's just drag this over here to this parking lot. And let me show you really quickly the difference in in quality of image. Okay, bam. Man, that's totally different than what Google Earth offered. Not knocking Google Earth, but sometimes it's good to have two different sources to pull your information from when you're making a trip like this, especially if it's, you know, it's 100 miles away. You don't want to get out there and be bummed because you... You, you didn't have enough data to plan your trip the right way. Okay, so this, now the other thing about the photographer's ephemeris that I really, really like is, say I thought, man, this is the perfect parking lot to get this moon picture. I can see by the dark blue line here that in my legend down here, the timeline, dark blue represents where the moon is going to set, okay? And that's gonna set at 0630. Okay, the light blue line show me where the moon uh, rose, and that's going to rise at 2141, so 941 at night. Okay, um, and this light blue line just represents where uh, the path of the moon is currently. And so at any rate, those are the two tools that, uh, or three tools that I, I use uh, in planning my trip for tonight. Uh, another tool that I'm going to share with you guys is called the Atomic Clock. And you can, I download this for my uh, Android phone, and it's going to give me some features that I can't seem to find on my regular clock on my phone, uh, like the you know hundredths of a second or thousandth of a second, which come into play when uh, we go over here and look at this data for the lunar transit see right here it says uh, on 75 this space station is going to pass in front of the moon at 0 100 hours 16 minutes after 0 100 hours 15 seconds point 39 so that point 39 is important because my clock on my phone doesn't have uh, those digits and so by downloading the atomic clock I have that and it's and that's really critical because Transit duration, see this right here? 1.24 seconds. This 0.39 up here, if I'm off, it doesn't sound like a lot, but I can't get that time back. And every single hundredth or thousandth of a second makes a difference when all I've got to get this right is 1.24 seconds. So that's why I download this atomic clock. It's really an important thing to have. Uh, unless, of course, your phone has a feature where it shows, you know, hundredths of a second or whatever. So at any rate, okay, so let's get ready and do the rest of the part of this trip and um, and get going. And I'll share with you guys some other stuff once I get out there on location. So as far as gear, I want to share with you guys. Uh, you don't have to have my, my camera, obviously, my body. But what you do want to be able to have is at least something like a 300 millimeter lens something that's going to give you some real you know bring the moon in that little space station is like a little blip okay so anything you can use to help bring that into you know uh into frame and and and, and make it fill the frame more is going to help you for this you know i have a uh one of canon's uh, 2x mark III extenders on a 300 millimeter lens. So that's gonna give me a 600 millimeter focal length. So we've got an extender and we've got a lens and I can manually focus the lens, that's what's important. Uh, and I can, you know, also use from the back of the camera, I can focus in live view, which I'm really gonna have to do with the moon tonight uh, and my glasses because without my glasses, really can't focus <laughs> so at any rate um and the one of the other tools i'm going to be using is an intervalometer and the reason i'm going to be using this i'm going to use my intervalometer and once it gets close to the time when that space station is supposed to pass i'm just gonna fire away until my buffer fills up okay 
once I get focus and I can look at my you know clock and I can say okay you know I'm within one second of this transit happening I'm just gonna go ahead and fire off uh, you know enough frames to fill my buffer and and hopefully I score the shot uh, of the you know uh, the transit happening so at any rate um, the intervalometer is handy for that because you don't have to touch the camera a sturdy tripod is very helpful um, which I have here to, you know and I mean you don't really need any really fancy gear you just need something that's gonna give you some some reach a tripod and a way to focus manually and the intervalometer is helpful and a clock you know with hundreds of a second on it I think it's hundreds or thousands I don't know somebody will correct me I'm sure but at any rate so that being said that's the gear I'm using and those are the apps that I'm using so here's I didn't get to show you folks earlier I was talking about this atomic clock and I downloaded it for my Android and you can download it for your you know iPhone also it's just but the importance of using this tonight is that it has the hundredths of a second over there or thousands or whatever that is on the far right that's going really really fast and the reason that's important is because my phone doesn't display that that um, you know in that style of, uh, of clock and so but the uh, International Space Station transit finder uh, app does display in that format so um, when you're dealing with something that only takes you know two seconds and it's gone you need to be able to account for every second when you're taking the photo and be set up and ready to shoot you know at exactly the right second so that's why this is important and I downloaded it so at any rate uh, I wanted to share that with you guys I didn't get to show it to you before we left but now that I'm out here on location I wanted to bring it up and, and let you see it's called the atomic clock so here we are in Santanella California which is another place where I uh, looked on the ISS transit finder and um, was able to line up a shot over here at Santanella off uh, I-5 and Highway 152 in California so we're going to set up to take this shot should happen here at uh, just shortly after 0, 0100 hours it seems that the space station the ISS transit finder is it gives you a time but then you should check that time again a, a couple minutes before you're actually going to uh, do your shoot because that time updates uh, double check the time in the app before you go to shoot get on location know that you're gonna be there at the time you need to be there but then a few minutes before double check and triple check that time because it seems to update right before uh, the transit happens auto detect because that's going to uh, GPS it's gonna see right where we are and um, auto detect uh, calculate and it's going to bring up a list of transits that are going to happen and this is the one we're interested in right here so we're going to show on map okay I'm going to zoom in on this and uh <laughs> maybe we're going to zoom in on that let's uh hang on let me get it back <laughs> get over here um so we'll do show more information and the time that the transit will happen is 0 1 16 15 27 okay let's see how that differs from what I got earlier today uh, 16 15 27 what I got earlier today was sixteen fifteen twenty seven see sixteen fifteen point thirty four so it is changing a little bit so I said all that to say that make sure that once you're set up and it's getting close to the time double check with the app to make sure that you're not going to miss your shot by a few seconds you know before or after the original time you thought it was going to transit in my view I'm focusing on the moon and drag it back over we're just getting there's a little bit of wind out tonight it's kind of picked up a little bit hopefully it dies down that could affect sharpness of the image but we've got four minutes until the shot 
and during that four minutes this moon is going to continue to move across my live view screen because we're rotating and and uh and the earth is rotating and it's making the moon change look like it's changing position in the, in the viewfinder but uh, as long as we're focused and our exposure is locked in we're good i'm set up here with my intervalometer got my atomic clock on you know we're ready to ready to hit this tonight man we've double checked our transit time so everything's good so we're going to shoot this at 1 15 which is four minutes away from now since i know this moon is going to continue to move through my viewfinder i'm going to bring it just a little bit over so that way as the minutes count down to my shot I know it's going to be in my frame. Let's get focus again. There we go. Okay, so now we're just waiting for the time. One, sixteen, four. We're going to shoot this bad boy off. One, sixteen, fourteen. Get my atomic clock out. Intervalometer set to high speed. so that I can fire off eight frames a second. And you'll see a little haloing on the back of the viewfinder here and some lens flare, but there's, there's none in the uh, image itself. It's only, uh, I double checked that because I was concerned about this lens flare, but that's only visible on the back of the screen. It's not in the actual image, so we're good. Can you see that on the... Mm -hmm. Okay. One sixteen fourteen. Here we go. We got just, just over a minute. Double checking my focus one more time. Focus is looking good. It's a little windy, man. I hope that wind holds out. One sixteen fourteen. We're getting there less than a minute. One sixteen fourteen. Counting down. Well, I'm excited. We got to get this right tonight. One sixteen fourteen. Come on, baby. Sound like I'm at the dang horse races. Come on, baby. One sixteen fourteen. Here we go. About thirty seconds. I'm not gonna fire I'm not gonna stop firing until this buffer is full. 116 14, nine seconds. Seven seconds. Here we go, 10. Filling that buffer up. There we go, baby. I better I got something in there. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed this. One reason I filled the buffer is because in case there's any variance in time, uh, I want to make sure that I'm shooting as long as I can so that I don't miss anything in case, you know, there happens to be a glitch in the app or anything like that and I've wasted, I don't want to waste any time, you know, having driven that far out there. So I just, a second before that transit's supposed to happen, I'll, st I'll hit my button and I'll fill that buffer and I'll shoot until it stops and that way I'm sure to have got something and not missed anything. Another side note, another app that I use is called Weatherbug. Always check the weather where you're going to uh, go shoot. Make sure that the weather is permissive for the type of shooting you're going to do. Thanks for watching guys. Like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, I really appreciate all the support and all the comments and feedback. Follow me on Instagram, insightful underscore imagery, Facebook. Uh, insightful imagery and check out my website. Thanks a lot guys. Take care